Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Um, please just give us two minutes uh, for Facebook to get this video visible to everyone. Good morning. I really do appreciate you making up time to be here. Uh, good morning. Um, we are all just so excited and still in the spirit of um, Thanksgiving. So <laughs> if you are like me and you just want to continue eating turkey and relaxing at home, but well, we're here today. Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Just give us one second. I am trying to get this out there. Okay. Perfect. Visible. Okay, great. Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for being here. It is such an honor to have you guys in the house. I am so excited. I'm so sorry we should be on Instagram as well, but we will be running another session. For some reason, we're unable to connect right at the same time um, on Instagram. So we will have to do this uh, shortly. But good morning. I am so excited that you made up time to be here. I don't know which country you're joining us from, but if you're here in the United States, um, happy Thanksgiving. We have had such a great time in the past couple of days. Everyone has been excited. Uh, yesterday was um, uh, Black Friday. If you got a chance to go shopping, just give me some thumbs up, okay? <laughs> yes, so we're all still in the holiday mood, I, I understand. And some other part of the world, uh, people are getting ready uh, to step into the holiday. It, it looks like the stores are kind of rushing us this time. I was just having that discussion with my guests. I said, as soon as Halloween is done, the next thing you see is Thanksgiving and the next thing is Christmas and Christmas decorations everywhere. It's fun, but it kind of feels like, oh my God, the, the, the uh, year is getting to an end. So good morning, guys. Welcome to the Civilized Presence. And this is the online TV session where lives are changed, where people discover their self, their purpose, their voice, and learn social skills that are required to thrive in the real world and become change makers. So if you want to become a change maker, raise your hand and just let me know that you're here. Give us some thumbs up, smiley face, hearts. Give us some support, guys. Um, this is what Facebook requires uh, to make this video visible to everyone. So for those of you who have never met me, I am your girl, Louisa Akaiso, and I am your host for today. I feel so honored that you responded, guys, to the call, even on Saturday, uh, that you responded to the posts on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, maybe you found on your friend's page or somebody invited you or you're watching this on replay. Thank you. So guys, we're here every Mondays and Fridays at 10, uh, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Hello, Dr. Kelly. It's so good to have you in the house. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that you had a great Thanksgiving. Yes, I am so excited that we're here. Um, it took me a while to be able to reset my brain back to work. You know what I mean? When you get a chance to dine with the kids and just kind of um, lazy around, you'll you know, kind of feel like, excuse me, should we go back to work? But of course, we're here this morning and I'm excited. So for those of you who have never met me, I am a certified master civility trainer and a leadership speaker and coach with the John Maxwell team. Hello, Dr. Kelly. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Beth from Kenya. Thank you for being here. Hello, Esther from Nigeria. Thank you for being here. Hello, Sandra from Canada. Izzy from Canada. Thank you for being here. Hello, Cynthia from London, UK. Thank you for being here. Yes, we're here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So guys, I am so excited because I have someone very special to me in the house and she's a returning guest. Uh, some of you have learned from her before, but if it's your very first time, you're in the right place. So just hang on tight because she's ready to drop some great nuggets this morning. And I am talking about Andrea. I'm going to introduce her in a moment, guys. So for some of us who are just jumping on, because we always have new guests every week, the main goal of this Facebook series is really to help 
restore civility through meaningful and constructive conversation. And I had promised you when we started in the month of April that I wouldn't be doing this alone. I'll always be doing this with some of my colleagues, experts from a different field, different part of the world. And you might be asking a question, why did we get this started? Yes, we had a lot of questions about civility and people kind of find it difficult to understand why it's so important to be civil, understand etiquette, manners, being polite and all of that. And that's why we had to set up this platform. Um, and just to help you break it down. Hello, Raj uh, Kumara. Thank you so much for being here. And let us know where you're joining us from. I really do appreciate you for making our time to be here. So what we've done really is to try to break this down into tiny little bits and show you how easy and simple it is for you to be civil. And if you've never been civil before, that's okay. You can begin right after the show tiny little things like please and thank you or uh, even good morning good afternoon good night if you're in dubai like andrea um sometimes some of us find this so difficult to even share a kindness with the person next to you and that's why we're here every mondays and fridays really to show you that guys it's not that difficult so before we continue i'm just going to share with you a definition of civility and that's from dr pf funny that's the father of civility a grandfather if you you want uh, permit me to say and this states that being civil means being constantly aware of others and weaving restraint respect and concentration into the very fabric of this awareness so that means that civility is gracious goodness but you know what it's going to have to begin with us it is about us being responsible for our actions to continuously ease the experience of the person next to us Civility is focused on positive people's treatment. Um, and you've heard that when we shared uh, the golden rule civility, uh, positive people's treatment. So um, it is, I mean, I know it's a lot, it might seem like it's easy to teach people how to um, be well-mannered or, or be civil, but trust me, putting it into practice, that's always the most challenging part. And that's why you have to hang on with me here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So now let me tell you who is a special person in front of me. Her name is Andrea Stefanesco. And Andrea, please forgive me, just in case I pronounced that wrongly. Now, and okay, so Andrea um, is well, one of the lead VVIP flight attendant in an award-winning international luxury flight services provider in the UAE. She has worked uh, with members of the royal families in the Middle East, as well as heads of states and important public figures in the global arena. And Dreyer represented the UAE in major business uh, sponsorship events across the world and received training in silver service etiquette and protocol for the VIP in industry from the lead silver service trainer in Montreux as well. Uh, the former uh, VIP steward of the Queen in London. And Dreyer is the founder and owner of Her Manus, an online platform for cultural diversity, Manus modern etiquette and evasion. So guys, you see why you know, I am so excited this morning, even though it's a Saturday. Um, Andrea is very special to us. I am so honored, Andrea, that you had to make out time even at night in Dubai to be here with us. So Andrea, just take a moment to say hello to the audience. Over to you, Andrea. Well, hello everyone and a belated uh, happy Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you had and you're still enjoying a wonderful long weekend. Uh, we are here as well. And uh, just a quick note, actually, Her Manners recently rebranded into the School of Manners because I wanted everyone to feel included. And uh, a lot of the mm -hmm. men felt excluded from the brand. So I really wanted this idea of manners to reach everyone. So that's the only note. <laughs> But Perfect. thank you so much for the wonderful introduction, Lisa. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, do you have this showing on your Facebook um, and dryer? Because I can get some messages uh, from people still saying um, we cannot see the video. So, guys, just give us a minute and let me try to put this on Andrea's page. Andrea, it looks like you have some security. So can you please share this from my personal page? and just put it on your page and 
we are good to go. Hello, Louisa from Canada. Thank you so much for being here. It's such an honor to have you here. Hello, Alamudur. Oh my God, guys, if I cannot pronounce it, just bear with me. Hello, Ataula. Thank you so much for being here. I am so honored that you're spending time this morning with us. We're going to have fun. We're about to get this party started. So, Andrea, are you able to do that? Uh, I'm not sure where to click. Is it on? Uh, uh, on click on share and we should be able to put that on your personal page. I tried it, but I think you have some security, so it wouldn't let me. Yeah, yeah there but otherwise we'll just keep going. If you and guys can see me and hear me, I sincerely apologize. In Dubai, actually, we do have some security uh, regarding the Okay. Video. Okay, so that might be a problem. Moment, but I'm not really sure if that is. I would okay. share if I would see it. Okay. But I do hope it's not causing a lot of inconvenience for anyone. No problem. That's fine. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelly. Yes, Andrea is from the beautiful city of Dubai, guys. Hello, uh, Dr. Tracy. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Henry Samuels. Thank you for being here. Hello, Dee. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Linda. Thank you so much for being here. Guys, I'm going to leave you for a minute and focus on my guests, but I love you. Thank you for making our time. So, Andrea, how this works, of course, you already know because you're a returning client or a returning guest is that we just begin the conversation and we get things going. Guys, I don't know how many of us had a chance uh, to see the post of today, but you see with the holiday uh, season really in full swing or in some countries it's fast approaching in some parts of the world. I know that many of us are very excited, but then some people are kind of getting terrified with the array of events, uh, reconnecting with their distant relatives, and families, colleagues. And we are here just to make sure that that experience is worthwhile. And so, so don't be nervous, don't be worried. We got you covered and we're gonna be working on really great topics this season. Everything that's ranging from like dining etiquette to the art of gifting, dating, networking, um, how to be a great um, host and really have to have a great conversation at the table or even at any event so that you're not struggling. So you see, we're always thinking about you and how we can bring the best to you. So that's why we're here. Now, Andrea, my very first question to you would be, what does the term civility mean to you? Over to you, Andrea. Um, yes, we did talk about this uh, last time, and I will keep it short this time. I think civility is a lot about uh, you focusing on how you make others feel. Um, it's, yes. We talk a lot about mindfulness lately, um, but we become very mindful of how we feel. It's very important to be mindful of how you make others feel. And I think civility creates this type of harmony within yourself and within the environment that you're in a lot. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Tracy. It's so good to have you in the house. Anita, thank you so much for joining us from Canada. I am so excited to see all of my people just kind of jumping on board. And I can see a lot more people online. Now, if I haven't called your name, that is not because I do not appreciate you. I love you very much. But it's probably because you're not on my personal page. But I want you to know that you mean so much to me. So thank you for making our time to be here. Now, Andrea, I'm just going to go over to the topic of the day. And it has to do with the art of conversation. Now, people struggle a lot with having the right conversation, what to say and what not to say. Especially we're focusing today on the dining table, right? When we are on the table, some people get to talk and talk and get out of order. And, you know, it just makes the experience really tiring. Yes, hello, Dr. Tracy. So um, over to you, Andrea. I really want you to talk to the audience. We're really going to make this session very interactive. And guys, if you have any question, or if you have any contribution, do not hesitate to leave it in the comment box below because the expert is in the house. Now, if you love what we're doing, give us some hearts and some loves and thumbs up. And together, we can build a great community. And of course, Facebook will make this video visible to everyone okay so thank you so much uh for being civil and just giving us the hearts and the love so andrea over to you now the art of conversation is something that is very important and a lot of people struggle with that 
Now, what does it take, first of all, to be a great host, okay? Because sometimes conversation sometimes begins from the host. Now, when we are a host, um, maybe for dining, and we just finished Thanksgiving, so guys, forgive me, um, but I know that we have the Christmas and so much more coming up. When we are great hosts, or uh, when we are hosts, now, we struggle with being great because we do not know what a great um, uh, conversation starters. What are those things that we should say? What are those things that we should leave behind or discuss later on? So, Andrea, just talk to us about the appropriate art of conversation and how to be a great host. Over to you, Andrea. Uh, how to be a great host is a very long topic. Uh, it takes a lot. In fact, I was always joking that when I was in the uh, in the finishing school in Switzerland. Um, the book for business etiquette was this small and the book for hostessing etiquette was this big <laughs> because <laughs> it takes so much more for a woman inside the house to become the ho perfect hostess than it is uh, once you're in the business world. And a lot of very few people um, appreciate the amount of attention and emotion and work it takes from someone to actually become a very good hostess. Now, um, regarding the topics of conversation, yes, the hostess is always going to start uh, the topic of conversation and the host as well. Um, the number one topic that people love to talk about, and it's one that is really good to focus on, is about themselves. So if mm -hmm. uh, any of you have ever witnessed a lot of the very good uh, diplomats around the world, the very influencing people, whenever they meet someone new, they actually ask the question, what is your story? Mm. Because people want to be validated. People want to talk about themselves. Safe topics of conversation because uh, the reason why um, I am personally very happy to talk about this topic is because we've all been around the dinner table with our families. And our families always feel like it's comfortable and it's easy to talk about anything. And uh, that is the perfect time that they caught you to talk about uh, disciplining the children, to talk about any kind of fertility issues anybody around the table might have, to talk about money issues, health issues, everything that is definitely not uh, a conversation appropriate around the table. It always creates arguments. It's cre it, creates, uh, it ruins the, the beautiful atmosphere that um, a table dining um, environment should have. So I think that's the, why, the, one, the reason why most people are terrified of going back home and spend time with the family <laughs> around the table because uh, it's, yeah, it's not about the, the amount of food that they're going to eat. It's about the, what topics of conversation are going to come up this time and how are we going to deal with them. So in general, what I, I suggest from um, the people that are in this situation where they're at the dinner table and their family starts talking, talking about topics that they're not comfortable about, as well as for the hostesses that are trying to keep the conversation uh, light around the table. Um, because the, the Thanksgiving dinner is very heavy, so let's keep the conversation light. That is my number one uh, sentence that I wish you would take from this. Um, Topics of conversation are obviously um, things like weather, things that like achievements, things like definitely not politics. Do not go into politics around the dinner table. Do not go into health issues around the dinner table. Do not talk about the money around the dinner table. No disciplining children. No big uh, changing the world, uh, global worms. Uh, <laughs> no. So avoid topics that you know are going to go into a long debate. Nobody wants to really think so hard while they're trying to cut their turkey appropriately. So um, again, guys, if in any kind of situation, not only around the dinner table, if you are put in a position where somebody comes to you and starts talking about things that you don't really want to talk about, do not get further into the argument. Try to uh, redirect the conversation. So let's say somebody wants to gossip about something. Um, you would simply let the person finish whatever they want to say. Do not, you can even block the sound if you want. And then as soon as they're finished, say, you know what, I actually don't have enough information to give an opinion on this, but uh, what do you think about this turkey? <laughs> this is excellent 
and I'm so impressed of the way it turned out. There is so many ways in which you can just avoid kindly the, com- the, the topic that you're not comfortable with. As a hostess, if you even hear around the table about, um, let's say, uh, one guest starts talking about somebody's death or things that are really putting people down or uh, some... Uh, some sickness that he had, you know, those people that start talking about uh, horrible topics, uh, like how they had this surgery and the things that they took out of, of the last uh, surgery he had <laughs> around his knee. <laughs> and, how, and then there is all this uh, very colorful and uh, descriptive images that you have around the dinner table that sort of cuts the appetite. And uh, as a hostess, obviously, you have to pick, you have to be very in tune with what's happening and what the conversation is around at least as long as you can hear around your side of the table that's why um the the husband and wife should never sit together around the dinner table so if you're a host and a hostess you should each sort of uh, guide another side of the table so sit at opposite sides so this way you can actually manage and oversee how people are interacting maybe somebody's talking less maybe somebody is overpowering the conversation so it's up to you to also Look at the people that are not talking. It's up to the hostess to make sure that they, you don't put people that are very talkative next to each other. So then it becomes a corner that is very charismatic there, grabs all the attention. And then there is like a corner that always sits quiet and has nothing to, to add to the table. And it's something you don't want. You want this, um, this beautiful ambience to keep on going. And it takes, uh, it's like a choreography. Imagine that you're a, uh, you have a, 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 call a whole orchestra and you have to choreograph the entire meal to go smooth. And it's not just about how the meal is on the table, how the food is, the correct temperature and the right taste. Uh, it's also about how the conversation tastes on the table. And sometimes it can leave a really bitter taste <laughs> after the meal. That's so true. Make sure that you, you choreograph that as well. That's, uh, thank you so much, Andrea. I I have another question for you. Just before that, hello, Steve. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, Shegun. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, um, Biachi. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Now, I have another question for you, Andrea, and this has to do with dining etiquette. And I know how important dining etiquette is. Um, but of course, the different cultures, I know someone had a conversation with me a couple of days ago and she had a question. She said, Louisa, dining etiquette in Africa should be different because majority of our food is eaten with our hands. And of course, that is true. Do we have enough books for that? No, maybe not enough resources for that because we're still using the Western uh, resources uh, for every culture. And that's why there's a little bit of a hitch. So can you tell us more about dining etiquette, especially in your part of the world, and why this is so important that everyone must be able to acquire the skills? Over to you, Andrea. Um, It's important because you want to make the others feel comfortable. So this goes back to the same um, idea of why you should choreograph the, the conversation. You should make sure that people do feel comfortable in your presence. And that goes back to the platinum rule is uh, the platinum rule is uh, one step above the golden rule, which states you should um, you, you should treat the other the way you would like to be treated. That's the golden rule that everybody knows. Now, the platinum rule states you should treat the other the way he or she would like to be treated. So that mm-hmm. includes sort of the culture of the place. And mm-hmm. for that, I always share mm-hmm. with people my absolute be- favorite story which is uh, when uh, the Queen Mom had uh, uh, at one point some diplomats, some uh, Chinese diplomats over for the dinner table mm. and um, as guests. So at one point, the finger bowl arrived to the table. Now, the finger bowl is obviously just for, the, to, for you to dip your fingers in once you had finger food. Uh, however, in China, they only have... Um, soups coming in the in the in the bowls so uh, they assumed it's soup so they picked up the bowl and they started drinking from it now obviously the rest of the chinese diplomats they started like looking uh, weird and and giggling around each other and looking like okay they don't even know what that is for 
And the queen mom, what she did is that she picked up her finger bowl and drank from it as well and put it back. And that to me is the epitome of, of civility, of kindness, of, of making sure that your guests feel comfortable. So mm -hmm. yes, knowing what fork to use is definitely important. Knowing how to eat with your hands is definitely important according to what table you're attending. Um, but judging others on what they do around the dinner table will be bad manners. And then in that case, I don't care <laughs> how much you know. <laughs> you lack etiquette and you lack manners. Because as I said, that to me is my favorite story and that describes the best. Now, yes, there's not enough books written um, on uh, the different ways of eating in different cultures. And I agree. Um, however, you have in front of you at any dinner table the best reference you ever need. And you will ever, ever, yeah, you'll, you won't need any other reference other than the hostess. You always wait for the hostess to start and you follow uh, the rules of the hostess. So if she eats with her hand, if she eats with her right hand, you follow her way of dining, always. Um, some people, for example... Um, you know, they, they try to play all pretentious and they don't even eat uh, chicken wings <laughs> or, or <laughs> fries with their hands. Now, guys, don't, don't bore their snobbery. Obviously, you have to be aware of the, the dining environment you're in. So uh, even the, the queen, if she will join a table where people are eating with their fingers, she will eat with her fingers. So, yes, it's important for your confidence to know how to dine in different environments, but make sure that you... Uh, adapt to the people around you and to the environment you are in. So you, end of the day, why you learn all these things is to to build relationships with people and to be aware of how they, they feel. Getting back to some tips about how we eat in this part of the world, um, in the Middle East, uh, the difference, so what most people know is that they only use the right hand. So when they do eat, uh, they use only the right hand because the left hand is considered unclean. Mm. Um, different maybe to some parts of, of Africa and India where they actually, in India, it's a must and it's a polite way to use all five fingers because each finger represents uh, something and for them to eat mm. with their hand is a connection between the food and the spirit of the person. Mm. Um, and they put all five senses and it, it's, a, it's a beautiful and a very long story. So for those of you who follow me, maybe you've seen it in my post a lot. And uh, the difference, again, with the Middle East is that in the Middle East, the polite way to eat, it's actually only with the three fingers from the right hand. So they will only eat with the three fingers. I'm not sure if you can see me. Yes. <laughs> so grab the Wow. Finger. So you pull it and you then you direct it to your mouth, but only with three. Because for them to eat with all five fingers, it will show a bit of greediness from the person. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow, this is interesting, and, and thank you so much for sharing that. Guys, if you're just joining us, this is The Civilized Presence, and you are in the right place at the right time. We have quite a, a global audience, and this is why we bring in people from different parts of the world, so that if you have to travel to Dubai, guys, I do not want you to struggle with what the culture is about. This is why you have to hang on with me every Mondays and Fridays. Hello, Henry. Thank you so much for being here. So there's so much for you to learn, okay? And today we're talking about the art of conversation on the table. Yes, Dr. Tracy, thank you so much. Yes, this is great information. And this is great. Can you imagine? I went there and I was ready to eat like an African with my five fingers. And I'm probably struggling. And sometimes, you know, we go a little extra by even using your tongue. Oh, my goodness. Especially when the food is good. So you can imagine someone would throw you out of the table. So, guys, I hope that you got the information right. So use your three fingers, the first three. That's all you have to do. And you know what? I always say that when you are dining with people, you know, there's something that I try to um, educate the people around me. Try to have a little something before you go. So you're not too hungry and just kind of start jumping on everything that you see. Especially if, can you imagine if you invited someone for Thanksgiving and they just got so excited with the turkey and everything and just was eating everything and putting everything on their plate at the same time. 
No, that's not the right way. And that's okay if you've been doing that, but you're in the right place now. So you have the right information and, and you're going to learn even more on the sessions that are to come, the spirit of time, how you can celebrate the holidays with grace. That's what we're doing this time. Uh, thank you so much, Henry. He says, I have some spare time on the boat waiting to go through Panama Canal. I'm tuned in. Thank you so much. It's good to have you. Thank you. So I have another question for you. Now, everywhere in the world, I don't know about other countries, but it just looks like people cannot make a sentence without talking about politics. Like I'm tired. You know, you go to the nail studio, you go to the restaurant, and you're probably not even talking to the person on the next table. But as soon as they hear something, they jump up to you and say, yes, yes, I get it. I understand what you're talking about. People just kind of bump into conversations. I know that a lot of people are troubled about so many things that are happening in the media and on TV, but guys, we have to handle this with care, okay? So, and even on the dinner table, it's a good time for you to be able to connect and get to know what's happening with each other. It's not for you to talk about um, you know, politics and who you're upset about and who is your party and who you want killed and who you want down. And that's not the right time. So Andrea, my next question would be, when you are pressed, you know, for your political view at a social gathering, whether it's you know, at the dinner table or out there and networking or whatever, how best can you steer, you know, the general conversation away from politics? Because I know everyone in the world has got a leader or a president or whoever that they are upset with, okay? We are all upset with everyone. Trust me. I don't think there's any country that's happy with anybody. So that's fine. Now, how can we take away the conversation? Because that's something that is very sensitive. And some people get so passionate and so troubled that they can go on and on and on. And it messes up the whole experience. Now, how can we steer away from the general conversation um, and talking about politics or something that is very sensitive? Over to you, Andrea. I uh, did touch a little bit earlier on this. So, um you don't need to lie. First of all, etiquette will never have anything to do. And I want to insist on this idea with uh, honesty and lack of honesty. So um, a lot of people think that in order to, to be diplomatic and to be polite, you have to lie. You never have to lie. Honesty is part of etiquette and it's part of civility. And it's mm -hmm. part of, of you being a well-mannered person. Um, it takes... Of course, a lot of, of skills that you have to gain in time to <laughs> redirect the conversation as a polite person. But it is honest. We, none of us have enough information to give an opinion. Um, so even about the most, uh, maybe uh, some people are going to jump down on my head, but I'm not the supporter <laughs> to say. Uh, even about Trump, Trump is all over on, on the TV. The Kardashians are all over, not that they're in politics, but I'm just saying any kind of topics. Guys, we don't know these people. None of us, if you have met them and you, you know exactly what's going on in their mind and in their personal lives and um, human beings, we have this, um, uh, we, we judge others based on whatever we see and it's in the moment so if for example somebody ran me over the red light i just think oh that person is so bad is is an asshole <laughs> but if i jump the red light then i give myself an explanation well you know i was in a hurry i don't usually do this so we always find explanation for ourselves we judge ourselves based on the circumstances but we judge others based on on their actions in a certain moment so it's it's called uh um specific attribution um yeah i forgot the title of it it's a psychological psychological thing that we all do the reason why i brought this up is because i want you to remember this whenever you start judging someone in politics or even in your lives or on you've seen on tv the reality is we've only seen these people on tv and it's a reality and it's perfectly okay to tell the other person once they start debating it that you know what, I don't have enough information. I love uh, one point somebody used this sentence, they were asked why um, someone from the region that I really admire, um, she was asked, why don't you talk more about politics? And she answered, I don't speak that language. 
And it's perfectly okay, guys. We, I'm not a politician. I don't know enough. Why would I go into details? We're just people on the outside trying to discuss issues on the world that have no income, no, no outcome from the conversation. Even if I talk about global warming, as long as I'm not doing anything about it, why am I even bothering to talk about it on the dinner table? Don't waste your time with topics that lead nowhere positive. Mm. Add value to your relationships by talking about something that brings some value. Mm. And the reality is what bonds us is, is positive things. Let me share with you how I've done, even if you share how you've done the turkey to turn out so good <laughs> this time, or maybe ask tips about how they've done it. These are things that are, are valuable for your life, that are uh, relevant to your day-to-day life. But talking about Trump over and over again has any relevance really to your day-to-day life? Is not going to really make a difference? <laughs> so... Just say, I don't have enough information about this, but hey, I really wanted to tell you about this thing that I saw in university the other day. Just change the conversation. Nobody's going to revert back. And even if they do, you keep on going. <laughs> you just keep on talking about the topic that you think. Bring, bring something positive that happened in your life. Tell them about the story that just happened. Like I've just met this person the other day and it was amazing. I haven't seen them in so long. Or uh, talk about, uh, you know, how you're traveling somewhere and they've been to that place and ask them about tips from that place. There is so many ways to divert the conversation to something positive. And it's going to bring back so much value to your relationships and to the way your brain will work. Because every day you need to start to train your brain to to start stop seeing the negative in, any, in everything. So we, we really should have at least... Uh, a week of detox of negativity or at least a day a week start small a day a week in which you're not allowed to complain about anything so make that thanksgiving (laughs) dinner make that thanksgiving dinner there at least for the next year make one day a week in which you do not complain thank you so much andrea and hello karen thank you so much for joining us and now another thing that is i find that is very uh, troubling is the use of cell phones on the dinner table. Guys, let me tell you, it really bothers me. You go to a a great restaurant, beautiful place, and then you have a a party of uh, 10 people and maybe five of them are on their phones. So Andrea, I want you to talk about this because people do this even at home. They're never present with the people that they're dining with. They're never present with the people they're spending time with. And of course, this does hurt, you know, the conversation. And if you continue to do this, people kind of feel like you do not care about them. Now, can you just kind of guide us on a good way to go about this and why it is so important for us to drop our cell phones and respect and honor the person before you? I mean, just drop your cell phone for an hour. I don't know how long it's going to take for you to dine with these people, but everything can wait for that time. If you think they are important enough for you to dine with them, you can drop your phone. So uh, over to you, Andrea. Uh, When I uh, teach the dining etiquette, uh, one of the first questions I ask is, uh, because I see them having their phone in their hand, I'm like, so where do you think the phone goes? On the left or on the right of the dinner uh, dinner, uh, plate? (laughs) And they actually try, some of them, they try to figure it out. (laughs) Where is the correct place on the phone? Um, The the phone should never come out on the dinner table, ever. The reality is uh, there is no more important person than the person in front of you. And uh, you should remember this always. Um, I am absolutely shocked when I see sometimes even couples on a date and they're both on their phones. Uh, I don't even understand how relationships can be built when we're all on our phone. So I, um, because you already shared this about me, um, I've been for many years in, in private aviation And for those of you who don't understand how private aviation goes, is that I get a message at um, maximum 12 hours before a flight happens um, with the details of the flight. I'm on call basically nonstop. So um, they would just call and I have to be ready. I have to go get my uniform and fly. And I fly, no. So I, I used to fly for some of the most powerful men and women in the 
in the region. So I obviously had to always be ready. If I managed <laughs> to keep my phone in the bag for at least half an hour, and every half an hour, I would just apologize. I would pick it up and check on the notifications if I have anything from work and then leave it back for another half an hour. So anybody can do it. I think uh, even the... the even the president of USA, Obama managed to keep a perfect relationship with his wife, no? And I think we all admire that. And the reality is, if he managed to keep his phone out, <laughs> I think we can all manage. Unless, unless you're a father waiting for, like, with his wife in, in the last uh, month of pregnancy, and you're really waiting for the call, <laughs> I see no reason for anybody to have their phone next to them all the time. Um so it's it's a no for me, never. So you have to, to definitely keep. And guys, by all means, we all have emergencies. And I do understand. We're not ridiculous here. But if you do have an emergency, it, you have to um, go to the dinner table and apologize and say, guys, I'm really sorry. I'm going to keep my phone. I'm not going to put it on silent because I'm waiting for an important phone call. But at least put it face down or put it somewhere away. Don't keep it next to you. Don't put it on silent because you already apologized for the disturbance and you explain why you're doing this. So out of courtesy for the people around you, apologize that you're not going to put your phone on silent, that you're going to keep it aside, but you're waiting for an important phone call from your grandma, from your mother, from uh, there is an emergency at work. Explain why the emergent reason <laughs> for you to keep the phone um, and not put it on silent. Thank you so much, Andrea. And hello, Donald. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, um, Angel. Thank you for being here. It's so good to have everyone in the house. And if you're just jumping on, this is the civilized presence. You are in the right place, I always say, at the right time. And we are talking about topics that are going to help you to celebrate this holiday season with grace. Now, if you've been struggling every time that it's a holiday season and you're thinking, I have to keep jumping from one event to the other, we're going to bring you a range of topics, so much, uh, ranging from how to behave, what to say, the art of conversation, how to network, okay, how to communicate, and how to appear for your events. We're coming with all of that right here at the Civilized Presence. And so it's every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern time that I am here. But for this season, we're going to bring in more sessions uh, to be able to cover up with these topics because I know that Christmas is coming so fast and so soon. And we have so much to share with you uh, that's going to help you right before that time. A lot of us might say, I don't celebrate Christmas. That's okay. But you might have an end of year party uh, with your company. It might be a good time to connect with your colleagues. And some of us might be getting married. Okay. A lot of people are getting married. So you need to learn the right thing to do the right way to behave, the right thing to say, the right thing to wear, and just how to carry yourself with grace. It's very important, okay? Because of the art of first impression, this is real. When you lose it, you lose it for life. It's never going to come back. And so this is why you had to hang on and just kind of um, set a notification so that every time that we are coming on, every time that we have a post about our sessions, you are notified and you can be with us and join us. And please feel free to leave your comments in the box below. If you have any questions, this is something that bothers everyone about conversations. And sometimes um, a lot of people are having dinner parties and uh, just dining at home. And there's so much noise and you really cannot even figure out what is going on. And I always say that you have to treat yourself as the VIP that you are. If you do not treat yourself as a very important person, nobody's going to do that. Now, there's certain things that comes with that. And that's why you have to hang on with me every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Now, um, Andrea, I have another question for you. Now, this other question is kind of tricky because um, sometimes when there is a conversation, like you had mentioned, people should not lie. It's part of being civil. You can't be lying and be civil. It's not good manners to tell lies. Now, sometimes we don't even have an opinion or we basically do not agree 
And so we do not know how to go about it. And because we do not know the right way to go about it, sometimes people just kind of juggle um, anything. And of course, it might lead to arguments and, and all of that. How can we gracefully come out of that and just be able to say, I do not agree on this 100% with whatever opinion that you have. And maybe it's not a good time for me to talk about this. We don't have enough time to talk about this. Or I do not have an opinion. Oh, I do not even know about this topic instead of saying something that's a lie. So over to you, Andrea. Um, now, there's this, I think it has a couple of, of answers, this question. Right. So, um, yes, again, honesty is very important. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of self-awareness, first of all, to become a polite person, going back to the being mindful about yourself and about others. Um, and... The difference between um, a snobbery, I guess, and a person that is polite with integrity mm -hmm. uh, is a polite no. Is you knowing what you want and knowing what your values are, what you stand for. There is this quote that says uh, people who stand for nothing are going to fall for anything. It's really important that you, you never feel guilty when you have a set of strong goals in life and and you know what your moral grounds are. So I would never feel bad saying no, for example, to my friends asking me to go out for a drink when I know that I have a, I have a purpose. I need to, like, during the week, maybe I need to reach my goals. So I'm not going to feel bad saying, you know what, well, guys, thank you so much for inviting me, but I'm not going to go during the week. I'm not coming out. So it's nothing uncomfortable, is it, as long as you know why, uh, why you're doing certain things. And... A polite no will always start grateful. That's what people forget, is that um, they assume me being honest has to be me being rude or me being blunt. They don't realize that there is a way to remain kind and be honest. <laughs> so that means that I'll have to start with something grateful. There is always something positive, even in the person that drains you or ask you for things that you really don't want to do you still have to see the positive in it so let's say somebody comes and uh, I get this from the girls a lot asking me well yes but what if somebody I don't like keeps inviting me out for for lunch or ask for my number and I don't want to give my number I'm like well even in that situation just say you know I'll take this as a compliment thank you so much for the interest because it is let's not be <laughs> unreal here and any woman will see it as a compliment somebody is coming all the way to you asking for your number because obviously you are beautiful in their eyes and that will always be a compliment so say thank you so much for the compliment always always find something to be grateful for and then say no be assertive when you say no. Don't go into all this. You know, people don't understand when you go around it. Like you use all these fancy terms like, oh, but I'll have to respectfully decline or no. Don't think you're more polite if you like <laughs> put all these flowers and decorations on top of your no. Be assertive. It's really important. It's out of respect for the people so that they get a clear message. You don't leave room of maybe. Um, so... If you want to be even more polite and you really care for the person, you can always end your no with um, an alternative. But this is not a must. Um, for example, if somebody, I really don't want to upset and I'm, I'm working with the person. So I'll say, you know what, this is a compliment. Um, I, I don't want to share my number, but we're going to meet here every lunch anyway with the colleagues. So I look forward to having more conversations in this area. Isn't this nice? Would it make any man feel uncomfortable? Would it take a lot from you? Is there in any way a lie? It's not. You're meeting the person every day at work. This was a compliment in the first place, but you don't want to give the number. It's perfectly okay. <laughs> so, um, Yes, by all means, there is so many ways in which people can be kind. It just takes, uh, again, self-awareness, patience, and skills that, like Luisa said, you should tune in this channel and, and follow in and just grow that type of social skill and civility. Um, I attended recently, I don't know for those of you who don't know, Claude Silver, um, she's a chief heart officer, and I loved a quote that she said, the soft skills... I don't know who'd coin them as soft skills because they're the hardest skills to acquire in life. Absolutely. So, um, 
uh, that is something that uh, yes, I I think you need to work on every day on yourself. And even both Luisa and I, we we also work on ourselves every day. A- anybody does. We're human, and uh, humans are not robots. And we have we always have these bugs, and we have to work on them. So um, now regarding uh, the other part of the of the topic. Uh, whereas, you know, when, when people discuss things, um, could you remind me, Louisa? I, I, cause maybe I, yes. I'm not so if you do not have an opinion, I, if you do not yes. have an opinion, how to okay. be able to get out of it without struggling, because so, sometimes people don't want to hurt the person on the other side. Correct. And correct. so that's what leads to lying. Yes. So the, um, um, in this case, I think it's even easier than the first one. Uh, we always, always, I'm not sure when it started, but people always think that when somebody talks, they actually a- want an answer. They're actually waiting for you to, to share your opinion. And it's not. Most of the times people just want to talk. They want to be listened to. Uh, when somebody shares with you an issue that they have, uh, a problem that they have, believe me, unless they're specifically asking you, uh, what is your opinion on this? And even then I'll give you the answer. Uh, but most of the times if people just rant about things, just let them finish ranting. It's nothing about you. It's just they want to talk. Uh, we always assume that we have to say a reply. Uh, if somebody talks, you have to say, oh, I don't really dis- I don't really agree with you. You don't. You can keep it to yourself. <laughs> Unless somebody asks you, there is no no rule that states you have to contribute to the conversation if you don't want to contribute to the conversation. The same way as people complain that they started smoking because of the influence of the group. Well, nobody influenced you. <laughs> he, it was a choice. You have to take responsibility. If you want to take part in a conversation, it was always a choice to take part of that conversation. <laughs> nobody dragged you into it. So um, if they actually ask, what is your opinion on this? then you can go back to the sentence that I told you earlier where you say, you know what, I don't have enough information on this. So my opinion might be a bit different at the moment than yours, but I'm not really, I don't want to put a quote on it because I don't have enough information. And rarely we do. I mean, anybody, unless you actually work (laughs) with Trump (laughs) in his office, I don't think you have the right to such an extreme opinion. They, no, but none of us has because none of us has enough, enough information. So just discreetly and kindly avoid the topic. Let it go <laughs> because there is always a way. So, um, yes, yeah, so many people, I guess, would, would go back to, you know, I let's agree to disagree and this kind of topics. They're not my favorite, but they're they're kinder than others. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you. They don't have a green light from me, but they have an amber light. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We have more people here. We have Al. Thank you for being here. Ruthen. Uh, Hello, Maria. Hello, Lear. Hello, Mary. Thank you for being here. Hello, Iniabong. Thank you for being here. Hello, uh, Misty. Thank you for joining us. And for those of you who just got here, this is the Civilized Presence. We're here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Sometimes we're here on a Saturday because yesterday, of course, was a a holiday. Um, And so we have our guest here today. One, because it was a holiday. And secondly, she's a very busy person. And we are so excited that she made out time to be here. What is important is the message. You know, sometimes we might be here on Saturday. So don't nail me on wood and say, Louisa, you're supposed to be here only on Fridays. Guys, I'm here on Saturdays too. And I'm going to be here a lot more this season. Just talking about um, how you can acquire the social skills that would help you out. And as um, uh, adding to what Andrea said, you know, a lot of people refer to this as soft skills, but guides research from the very best, which is Harvard University, has shown that 85 percent of your success as a professional, as an entrepreneur, as an individual, as anybody is based on your soft skills. Eighty five percent. So it doesn't matter how much, you know. It doesn't matter how much content you think you have. It does not matter how many people that you think you're around with. 
But if you do not have your social skills in place, you're heading out for failure. And we don't want that happening. And that's why I'm here every Mondays and Fridays to help out. So guys, I just want to say a big thank you for all of you who made that time to be here. For those who will be watching this on replay, I want to say thank you too. And we will be back here on Monday, 8 a.m. Eastern time. So make it a date, hang on with me. Like I explained to you, we have a lot of great topics. If you had joined us at the beginning of the show, you could have heard the topics, but if you did not, I'm just gonna go by them again. Uh, we would have topics ranging from dining etiquette, the art of gifting, what is required from you as gifting and how to receive a gift. Some of you receive gifts without saying thank you. So you need to stop that. This year has got to be different, okay? The art of dating, dating the right way, and uh, networking, how to be a great um, host, uh, what not to wear during the season, uh, the art of conversation, because it looks like a lot of times when we receive an invitation to be at a party, we just feel, oh, it's time to go bare. No, that's not it. You're going to learn tips and tricks on what is appropriate for what. You need to know how to dress uh, for where you're headed to, not where you're coming from. So don't tell me that, you know, Louisa, I was in a hurry and something crazy was happening at home. And so I just picked up anything in the front of my closet and put it on and I ran out there. No. Dress up for where you're headed. Like you've noticed this morning, I had my scarf this morning just because I was going to work with Andrea. Okay, she's coming from the Middle East, and I had to honor her culture by just kind of covering my my hair, and you know, I hope that made Andrea feel happy and and be excited to see me cover my hair this morning. So, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you again on Monday. Yes, thank you, Dave, for being here. I'll see you again on Monday at eight a.m. Eastern Time. I hate to let you go, but we have to. Bye for now. Thank you so much. <laughs>